Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergarga.com and in this video we are going to look at four alternatives to the classic nested if functions. So let's get straight in with the first example and this is going to be a new function to Excel. It's called the ifs function and it came out in Excel 2016. So if you don't have that version, you can skip this bit unless you're interested straight away. But this, let's start here. This is a new function and it's meant to condense and simplify that nested if approach. So you haven't got to do those multiple brackets. Now in this example I've got, I've got four different membership types, gold, platinum, silver, bronze, different membership price for each one. We're saying platinum is 110, gold is 90, silver 65, bronze is 40. Let's get our ifs function putting that stuff in. So let me zoom in here so we can see and I'll fire up the ifs function. And this is what it looks like. We have a logical test, then a value of true, then another test, then another value of true, another test and so on. So you don't get that value if false that you get with your standard if so you have to start up the next one. So let's run through this. I'm testing the membership. I want to know if it's equal uh, to platinum. Testing strings here so it doesn't matter what order I type them in. Um, but I'm going to put them in the kind of a logical order for reading. So I'm quickly putting this in so it's hopefully not going to take too long. Helps if I don't uh, mess it up. 90. Then we test again. So, you know, this is not a huge improvement in my eyes. It's certainly a little bit easier for those people who may be new to this stuff because you're not opening all those parentheses each time, which is one of the things when I'm teaching, you know, especially people who are quite new to writing complex formulas, uh, the commas and the brackets is what, you know, people tend to struggle with in, in my my experience in my opinion so it does take that away from people we are literally putting each test in very similar to if you guys have done a, a account ifs and there's some ifs in there which came out in 2007 I believe they come out in your versions but this is it I've got my four tests still like an nested if I don't have that I just don't have that value if false and that constant opening of brackets if I run this this is my answer I copy that down I have the different prices for gold, platinum and silver on each go. Now in this second example, what I would say is a far more effective way of performing what we did in the previous example would be to do a lookup. So whether that's a VLOOKUP or an index match or whatever variation of lookup that, that you know or are aware of, and I've done many videos of them in the past. They can also perform this nested if uh, scenario, and they will be much shorter, much quicker to put together, much more dynamic as well than what we saw in the previous example or with the nested if, which we are talking about alternatives to. Now I have this lookup table on the right. There's the prices I did a moment ago. I'm going to pick on V lookup here, being the most well-known, most commonly used lookup function of all. But as I've said, an index match would perform this just as well. Some people would even argue better. So the lookup value is the membership. Let's put a comma in. The table array is this range on the right. I'm not going to spend too much time there. This is not a VLOOKUP lesson. Uh, you can find that elsewhere, those who are interested. Let's fix it up. Column 2, and let's put a false on the end. Here we're just looking at it doing a job instead of writing that big nested if. Look at the size of that compared to what we did in the previous example just, just a minute ago. Much simpler to put together and much more dynamic because people can just adjust this lookup table on the right. They can adjust the price, uh, adjust the memberships that we're offering and stuff and this would all update. It is a far better solution than nested ifs. 
Now in this third example we have another lookup. But in the previous ones we were looking at membership type like platinum, gold. So we're testing the string. We were testing text. Now I'm looking at testing the range. I have various scores and depending on the quality of that score depends what grade they get. So what I've done here is a couple of if examples. You know, I could achieve this with this formula. <laughs> Look at the size of that. Is it 90% or better? A. 80% or better? B. 70% or better? C. And so on, combinating F if anything else. I could also do if B, which is a far more resilient and durable alternative, because I've thrown the end function in. It's not so reliant on the order it's written in, etc. But look at the size of that in comparison. Now that works. You can see they're working on screen. But we're looking at improving that. You know, if somebody needs to change it in the future, a lot of people will be scared of a formula of, of that size and, you know, but let's say complexity. Let's see our VLOOKUP do it. Or once again, any lookup alternative can behave like this. It's very important in this example that the scores are in order in my table on the right. In column G, 0, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. It's essential that that is in order. Whereas in the previous example, it did not matter. Let's throw in our VLOOKUP. Provide a little bit of information on these lookups, but it's not a lookup tutorial with this. The lookup value is the exam score. The table array is this table on the right again. Let's fix that range. The column number is two again because the grade is the second column. And this time I want true on the end. This time it's an approximate match or a range lookup as it's commonly referred to as. Previously it was an exact match. Close that bracket and run this. And you can see I am getting the same answers as column B and C. You know, do what works to start with. We're looking at alternatives here and seeing how we can write easier, simpler, you know, faster formulas. But do what works. All three of these work, but especially compared to column C, surely there's no competition with how much easier that was to write and what you are going to prefer. Okay, and that leads us on to our last example, and I've left a right gem to the end here. I want to look at the choose function, a very hidden little gem in Excel that a lot of people don't know. And I'm using this here for this kind of interactive chart. Now, you wouldn't ordinarily have all this data on one sheet, so I apologize that it's a little bit messy, but I want you to see all the data I'm working with for the purpose of the lesson. But you wouldn't all nearly have this in a real example. But I have a combo box over in uh, on the left hand side here. And if I choose a certain football league like Serie A or if I choose the Bundesliga, when I choose that, my chart is updating. You see the title is changing. You can see the data of the, this is the top goal scorers. This is uh, the top goal scorers updating. And you can see that happening. This is from last season, the 2016-2017 season. How fancy is that? Now, this at the moment, this combo box is linked to cell A9. You can see when I'm changing it, it's changing the index value in there. That's a standard thing that form controls do. Once again, this is not a lesson in that. So if you're interested, you can find that stuff elsewhere. Uh, this is to focus on the formula side of things. Uh, apologies for that if you're hoping for more depth, but that is what's going on right now. I've got all my base data at the top, and the chart is actually linked to this range here. Well, technically, it's that range there. That's what it's using. And if I delve a little bit deeper, let me zoom in and actually have a look what's going on in these cells. We have a nested if. It is looking at cell A9, the link cell number three on my screen at the moment. If that says one, do A3. If it says 2, do D3. If it says 3, do G3. It's so just walking along from Harry Kane to Lionel Messi to Edin Zeko, you know, all the way across. And the same for the second uh, top goal scorer and the third one. Now that's doing a job. There's nothing wrong with that. But this is a classic example for a function called choose. So let me wipe out this data that I've got here. 
and also in that chart title above. And let's use the choose function instead. So I'm going to type equals choose, open in bracket. And what this will do is accept an index number, which is A9 right now. That's been generated by my combo box, or it could be a check box or a radio button. I put my comma in, and then they want the values. So now this is for the uh, name of the league. So I'm going to choose A1, comma, D1, comma, uh, G1, comma, J1. And it's as simple as that. So look at what index value is in there, and then give me the options. You're one, two, three, four. So instead of me having to test it and go, does it say one, does it say two, does it say three, and so on, there could be 10 of them. <laughs> this is far more straightforward. When I press enter, it says Serie A because that's got number three in it. If I change it to Premier League, it says Premier League because that changes to one. Now to complete this, I'm going to put my choose function in the ones below. Let me stick that in there. This time I'm fixing that, so I'll be copying this one. And for the top goal scorer, it's that cell there, A3, it's D3, it's that one, it's that one. I close bracket, let me copy this stuff down, that's enough. Across, that's going to do my heading that's bold. How long does it take to turn it off bold? And there we have it. Let me zoom out. The choose function, a much simpler approach, uh, much faster, much easier to change in the future. That cell there. But now it works. Look at this. Serie A, Bundesliga, the chart, interactive, dynamic, updating as I change values. Very impressive in Excel dashboards and reports. But very simple to put together. It's just a chart on a range, but the range is dynamic. And the choose function is providing that multiple test scenario as an alternative to the great nested if. I hope you found this video tutorial useful. Please check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.